Um, thank you for the warm welcome. Um, very glad to be a part of the Anuit um, session today. So um, today I'm going to talk about my work on emotion awareness in software engineering, specifically towards understanding how we establish trust in software development teams. So I'm going to start with a little bit of motivating tweets. Um, so as you can see from some of the tweets from uh, practitioners here that, um, you know, uh, developers do value uh, and acknowledge the importance of trust and uh, coordination in software engineering teams. Um, this is incredibly important towards building good software. And, you know, if you don't care about human aspects like trust and collaboration in your project, your project is already in trouble. Right. Um, so what I wanted to do as a researcher, me and my uh, my lab uh, at Drexel, we wanted to understand, OK, is there a way we can, um, you know, analyze uh, and see how specifically trust is incorporated or exhibited on GitHub? Um, because, you know, this is so important, but trust seems to be very vague and we don't understand what we mean by trust. Um, so before we start analyzing and looking into GitHub repositories, it's important for us to know and understand what is trust. And it seems like the answer to that question is quite complicated. So several uh, researchers in the field of psychology has, um, you know, studied um, trust and came up with different types of definitions. And, uh, you know, the, the one that is the most closest to software engineering, specifically because it's designed for um, virtual teams, is listed on my slide here. So I'm just going to pause for five, ten seconds for people to read it, um, because I'm just, just not going to read something out on the slide. Okay. So what do we understand by this? It's it's vague, right? We don't understand really what 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 is trust. And um but and we we kind of we are making decisions in software engineering teams about like hey, who we trust, who we don't trust, but we don't completely understand what we mean by it. So, you know, we all are engineers. So, let's try to break it down and see what are the different dimensions and what drives our decisions in software engineering teams. So based on um, psychology, there are several dimensions of trust. By that, I mean factors that implicitly drive your decisions. So what are those? So the first is action-based trust. What is that? So for example, you would trust a person more if you uh, can communicate well with them with minimal delays and good communication overall, because you just know that that person is more reliable, right? Then there's commitment-based trust. So that happens when you both of you are committed towards uh, fulfilling a certain type of task or you have a specific goal, a common goal. Then is competence. So for example, say if you're trying to assign a bug to a developer in your team, you would want to assign it to someone who you think is competent enough to solve that problem. So that is competence-based trust. Next um, is institutional trust. So for example, people who belong to the same institutions tend to trust each other more because they think that they belong to the same institution and therefore have the same set of values and goals. Um, the next is very interesting. It's a personality-based trust. So some, some people inherently are have more propensity to trust others. So that is just like a personality-based trust. And the next one is transfer trust. So what we mean by that is, say, I know a person who I trust, uh, who we say is person A. Person A recommends me person B, who I do not know. But since I trust A, I would trust that recommendation 
and would therefore trust the new recommended person B. So that is what we call by transferred trust. Okay. So these are the, the dimensions of trust that we find in psychology, but we want to understand how this you know, is translated in a software engineering context. So to do that, uh, we, we did a preliminary study on GitHub pull requests, which has been accepted at ICSI near track this year, uh, where we manually analyzed a set of 100 pull requests on GitHub. We chose four repositories, four popular open source repositories to collect these pull requests. And we consider just not the text, but the overall, the metadata, the developer profiles, everything to do this analysis. Um, so since we talked about all these dimensions of trust, let's see how exactly it translates in, in a context of pull requests on GitHub. So we see action-based trust being exhibited when the frequency and quality of comments or reviews of the pull requests, right? So if there's a good quality comment, good explanation, and then the person is just more proactive and responsive, then you, you develop an action-based trust. Similarly, commitment-based trust is reviewing pull requests when requested or addressing a reviewer's comment. The third one is interesting. So we tend to look at people's past actions in the repository and on, on GitHub, for example, can look at the developer profile and know that, okay, how many repositories that developer has contributed to? Have they, you know, what is their, their overall, you know, statistics so far, how, how long they have been contributing, so on and so forth. We also notice that developers who are associated with say the same GitHub organizations would tend to trust each other more. The personally based uh, trust is a little bit tricky uh, because we, you know, from our research, we know that this personality based tools um, are the automatic detection tools does not perform as well on text. So, you know, it's just, therefore we did not rely on any text based uh, identification of personality based trust here what we did was we would we we actually looked at overall like with the manual analysis we see that developers who accept overall accept a high number of pull requests from people that they do not know before have a general higher propensity to trust and finally the transfer trust of course the well established members recommend new contributors and that is how we develop transfer trust uh, on github so this is all good but i i think like you know now that we have a, an idea of how it is uh reflected on pull request i thought it would be good if i can show you a pair of examples and how it is exactly exhibited on pull request so on the left, I'm gonna show you a pull request which has been accepted, uh, shows high level of trust. And on the right, I'm gonna show you uh, a pull request uh, example where you know it's, it has not been um, accepted at the end and uh, it does not exhibit high levels of trust. So just to go by dimension by dimension here, First, you see that here, just by looking at the people who have, you know, started the pull request, that you see that there are like this person has a lot of followers. There is 96 person pull request acceptance, a uh, member of the project. So you kind of develop a higher trust on this person than this person who has a relatively less, uh, you know, uh, number of followers, not a member of the project, and so on. Um, similarly, as I was talking, like mentioning before, that high action based trust. Of course, you see here that there is a lot of detailed, frequent feedback, good questions. And you see here, like, you know, there is like someone asking for this question. There was like no responses, no discussions. So, you know, there is, there is very, you know, less activity there. Uh, again, uh, moving along the same lines, commitment-based trust, reviewing and revising the code when requested. And again, because there is no response there, there is no review request, no changes are being implemented, nothing. Um, and then uh, the personality-based trust, just by looking at you know how many pull requests being closed by that person. 
and institutional trusts again we by we look at the developer profile and see how many organizations github organizations they are part of if there are common uh github organizations that they are part of and so on so overall the the point here i'm trying to make is that you know our our inherent uh you know propensity to trust people drives our some of our very important decisions in software engineering and this is just one example of it um and if we want to do better and uh, you know improve trust and collaboration we need to understand and think about the decisions that we are making here and why we are making those decisions so overall um i suggest that you know Examine what you trust and how you trust in your software engineering team. This will help you identify the risks in your collaboration in future. Um, if you identify certain aspects that drives your decision, I suggest you speak frankly about your trust levels and that kind of just improves transparency and improves uh, collaboration and communication in the team. Um, understanding team dynamics in terms of these trust dimensions that I talked about today can also help project managers in timely interventions. Of course, uh, automatically detecting trust is a very difficult concept as of now because, you know, we as human beings first need to understand what is trust and why we are making those decisions. So this work was a kind of a, you know, the first stepping stone towards that. And uh, as I was like uh, briefly touched upon before, so the most, most important part is that practitioners should focus on transparent communication and regular feedback along these lines and this trust from trust dimensions would build and maintain trust in your teams. Um, so that is uh, all that I have uh, for today. There is a QR code here, uh, with, which links to the preprint of our paper. And this work is just uh, one small part of our bigger project of emotion awareness in software engineering. So if you are interested to know more, uh, please uh, refer to uh, my website or feel free to connect me, contact me, and I'll, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. If we can get Christian started setting up, we do have one question and maybe we have time to get that one uh, out the way while we're waiting for or we, while he gets set up. So we had a question. Is there a nuance between institutional and commitment trust? Because it seems like they might just be special cases of one another. There is the, they are definitely correlated because institutional trust by that we do not just go beyond anything apart from if they're part of the same institutions or not, right? But commitment-based trust is more. It's like, okay, you can be a part of the same organization, but you, if you're not committed towards same goal, you are not developing that level of trust. So I would say in my mind, institution trust is just like at a very basic level and commitment-based trust kind of builds on top of that. It could build on top of that. Got it. 